In this lesson, you will learn how to draw a scatter plot, determine the correlation coefficient, as well as to use the regression line for a set of ordered pairs of data. So starting with the scatter plot, first thing is what is a scatter plot? Well, we see here a scatter plot is simply a set of points that have been plotted on a graph. So to create a scatter plot, all we do is we plot points onto the graph. We also have what's called correlation. Correlation shows the relationship between those points in the graph. Or more simply put, it shows how closely two things are related. So an example would be, there may be a high correlation between smoking and lung cancer. Meaning there's a high relationship between smoking and lung cancer. The more you smoke, the better chance you have of getting lung cancer. However, there would be no correlation between the length of your hair and the year of the vehicle that you drive. Because there is no relationship between hair length and the year of the vehicle. Now there are types of correlation that we have. We have positive, negative, and then no correlation. So positive correlation is kind of like the idea of direct variation. Where as one value increases, the other value also increases. So we see over here, as we plot the points, it is creating kind of a line that's going to be having positive slope. So if it's going up like this to create the general trend of going up, then this is going to be a positive correlation. Whereas over here, negative correlation is where one value increases while the other value decreases. And this is comparable to inverse variation. And we see here that the points are going downwards like this. And this is negative slope. So if the points create a negative slope, there's negative correlation. If it creates positive slope, we have positive correlation. And over here, no correlation would be no relationship between the two sets of data. And we see that with this plot, there seems to be no pattern in the data. It is just a bunch of random points. Now with correlation, we have what is called a correlation coefficient. And what it is, is it's a number between one and negative one that shows the amount of correlation between two sets of data. We represent it by the letter R, and the closer the coefficient is to one or negative one, the higher the correlation. The closer it is to zero, the lower the correlation, where zero would be no correlation. Positive correlation coefficient would have positive correlation. A negative coefficient means we have negative correlation. So for example, let us say that we know the correlation coefficient is 0.98. Notice it is positive, so we have positive correlation. And then it's closer to 1 than it is to 0. Because it is closer to 1, it has high correlation. Whereas here we have negative 0.98, so negative correlation coefficient means we have negative correlation. And that is because R is negative. And then we also know that because it is closer to negative 1 than it is to 0, then it's going to have a high correlation. Here's another example. We have r equals 0.1. First off, it is positive, so it's going to be a positive correlation. And then, because it is closer to 0 than it is to 1, we know it's going to be low correlation. Here we have negative 0.1. It's a negative number, so it's going to be negative correlation. And then, we know that because it is closer to 0 than it is to negative 1, it's going to have low correlation. One more example, we see r equaling 0.32 is positive correlation because we have a positive correlation coefficient. And then it's going to be low correlation because it is closer to 0 than it is to 1. Now be careful because the concept of correlation means that there is a relationship. But just because something has high correlation does not mean that one thing causes the other. 
So for example, we know that there's a high correlation between the body weights and achievement test scores among children. So this does not mean that you should overeat in order to increase your test scores. What might be happening is a third variable, such as the age. Because as your age increases, so does your body weight, and as well as your achievement scores because you get smarter and smarter. So because there's a correlation, does not mean that the high body weight causes the increase in test scores. So we've learned about correlation, we've learned about the correlation coefficient, but the question is how do we come up with that correlation coefficient in order to analyze the data and determine if there is high or low correlation or positive or negative correlation. So there's a way that we can calculate this number. Here is the formula and it's kind of complicated looking but what we have is the capital M is the mean or the average. The lowercase sigma is the standard deviation. So the capital M with the lowercase x and y, what that means is that when you collect a set of data, we are collecting ordered pairs, right? So it could be maybe age and grade, or uh, it could be the height and the shoe size of a person. And we're trying to determine between the two sets of data if there's a correlation or not. Well, the x and the y means that we are multiplying those two numbers. So we multiply the two pairs, the two numbers that are paired together, you multiply them and take the average of those. And we'll explain that here in a little bit. And then the capital M with the lowercase x, what that means is that we are taking the mean of the first set of data. And the s with the lowercase x means we're taking the standard deviation of the first set of data or of the x values. And then m with the y and the standard deviation symbol with the y are the mean and standard deviation of the y values or the second set of data. So here's an example. We have shoe size and the height. And the question is, is there a relationship between the shoe size of an individual and their height? So obviously this is a very small set of data and this is not going to be very conclusive, but I'm going to give this example to illustrate how to find the correlation coefficient. So here's the formula, and we'll start by doing the mx, my, and the sigma x and sigma y. So the shoe size would be like your x values, and the height would be like your y values. So when you see the mx right here, what we are doing is we're averaging the shoe sizes. So to average the shoe sizes, we add and divide. So when you do that for the shoe size, we are going to get 10.1. Do that for the height as well, and we're going to get 68. When we do that for the height, that's going to be your my, the mean of the y values. And then the sigma x and sigma y means you take the standard deviation of the shoe sizes and the standard deviation of the heights. And I'm not going to walk you through step by step in this example, but we can find that to be 3 and 3.75. So then the only other part left over is going to be the m with the subscript of x and y. And what we do here is we're going to multiply 8 times 64 to get some number, 9.5 times 64, 10 times 69, and etc. You're going to multiply those together and you're going to average those numbers together. So you average by adding and dividing by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what you get is going to be right here, and that will give you 690.4. So what I do now is just plug everything in. So what I'm going to get will be 690.4 minus 10.1 times 68 divided by 3 times 3.75. So when you do all of that, you're going to find the correlation coefficient equaling 0.32. And so we see that there is a positive correlation between the shoe size and the height, but it seems to be a pretty low correlation based off only these five sets of data. Now when you plot all of the data onto your scatter plot, 
we can create what is called a regression line, which is a line that best fits the known values of the variables. So here we see there's two other names we have. One is the line of best fit, the other is a trend line. So looking at an example, we see all of these points plotted, and a trend line would be a line that kind of cuts through the middle that shows the trend of the data. And there's actually a way to determine specifically where this line should be instead of just drawing it by freehand. So it is drawn through the middle of the sets of data, and we can use this to see the trend and use this to make predictions with new data. And to calculate, what I do is I'm going to have the point MX and MY, where, remember, this is going to be the mean or the average of your X values, and then MY is the average of the Y values. And then the slope of the line is found by taking the correlation coefficient, then multiplying it by the standard deviation of the Y values, and divide that by the standard deviation of the X values. So we have learned how to interpret the correlation coefficient. We learn how to calculate it by hand. And we also learn how to use the correlation coefficient to create a trend line. Now all that was by hand. But now with technology, we can do that very quickly. And here we're going to show you how to do that in Microsoft Excel. So what we have here is actual real life data collected. Okay, we've collected shoe size and height of actual people. And we first want to show you how to find the correlation coefficient. So what you do is, after you collect the data, we can go in here, press equals, and then start typing in the word correlation. You notice here that C-O-R-R-E-L appears. You can click on that, or you can put parentheses, and you see that it's asking for two different arrays. An array is a like list of numbers. So here we can highlight our first list of numbers. So this would be our shoe size. All right, and then we press comma. And now it's going to ask for array 2. So now we highlight the second list right here. So we highlight it. And then we put parentheses around. So we put parentheses and then we press enter. Notice our correlation coefficient is 0 0.77102, etc. Now, doing it by hand with only the, the five data points uh, in the PowerPoint that we were using, the correlation coefficient was pretty low, right? It was a 0.3. So you see with more data, we can get an actual better, uh, more accurate number. And so we see here with 0.77, it is closer to one than zero, and there's a pretty high correlation, all right? And then it's a positive correlation as well because it's a positive number. So it's a pretty high positive correlation. Now what we can do as well is we can create a scatter plot uh, with this data. So we can click and highlight both columns at one time. All right, so we do that. And then we can press the insert button. And then over here we see all these different chart options. Um, so the one we want is gonna be the scatter plot right here. So we click on it and now we have a scatter plot. All right, now within this chart, we have different options. So we can click in here and we see we can click different things. So the one we want actually is gonna be a trend line. So right here, we've created our trend line and we see it um, in the chart. All right, now what we can also do is we can click on the trend line that we've just created. We can right click and when we do that, we see a format trend line button. So we click on that and now look over here on the side, we have different options. So we see one of the options that we have is we can display the equation on the chart. So we click it and notice that the equation is given to us right here. And if you want, you can resize that, make it larger if you want. Um, so let's maybe do that so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to click on this here. Okay, that's not really working for me, but hopefully you can see that um, good enough. We have our equation for the trend line. Now, what this can be used for is we can use this to make predictions. So there's a famous basketball player named Shaquille O'Neal, and his shoe size 
is 23. So he's a really big guy. All right, his shoe size is 23. And the question is, based off that information, can we figure out his height? So what we can do is realize that with these two columns we have over here, we have the shoe size and the height column. The shoe size is like your x value. All right, so this is like x. And then height is kind of like your y column. So for shoe size, you are plugging in a 23 in place of x. And you plug it in to the equation over here. So what we can do is we can type it into the equation. So what we have is equals, then we have 1.5901 times, it says times x. So times that by the shoe size. We can press or just click right here. All right, and then um, plus, it says 51.388. Press enter, and there you go. That says height in inches. If you want to convert to feet, you would have to divide that by 12. So take that, divide by 12, press enter, and we see that he is seven foot, and then 0.33, um, what is that in inches? So 12 inches and a foot, so we point three three zero zero two five times 12, and that gives you four inches. All right, so based off this calculation, we can conclude he is somewhere around seven foot four inches and in reality if you look it up he is actually seven foot one inch so we're off by what like three inches um and actually if you, if you google search some places said size 23 some places said size 22. so if you put a 22 in here notice now it's 7.2 uh 7.2 feet right here and then 0.2 times 12 that gives you, whoops, got to put equals in there. So put equals 0.2 times 12, and that gives you 2.4 inches. So with the size 22, we can estimate his height to be about 7 foot 2 inches. And in reality, he was 7 foot 1. So it, it is pretty close to his actual height. So it's not going to be exact because the correlation is not 100%, but we can get a pretty good prediction of his actual height. All right, and this could be useful um, if you are maybe a forensics um, analyst or something, you're working for the police department, and all you have is the shoe imprint, uh, the shoe size of a person, of, of your criminal. You can use that information to find the height of the person you're looking for, and you can help create a profile of that individual. So there is application of that. And kind of a fun example, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the story of David and Goliath. Um, Goliath was a giant, and uh, it's a story in the Bible. And Goliath, um, according to the, the Bible, is, his height can range depending on how you interpret the word cubit. Uh, but we think his height was about 9 foot 9 inches. So our question is, what would be his shoe size? So we're kind of working backwards in this case. So what we can do is we need to figure out his height in inches. Uh, so if he's nine foot nine inches, um, each foot has 12 inches. So nine foot would be 108 inches plus the other nine. 108 plus nine is 117 inches. All right, so what we need to do is we need to plug this in place of y into the equation. All right, so um, we have here y equals so let's, I'll try to do this here in Excel to show you. Um, so we have y equals, um, so you're gonna plug in a y. So it's gonna be plugging in the 117. You're gonna plug in this number. All right, so you got 117 um, equals, and it's equal to 1.5901 times x plus 51.388. So you have to solve this. Um, so you have to subtract this 51.388 to the right side. So we take this 117, subtract uh, this number. All right, press enter. So now we have that equals, and it's gonna be 
five, nine, we'll just make e so equals, equals in this, and then x. So we have 65.612 equals 1.5901 times x. All right, so then from here, we have to divide both sides by 1.5901. So we have x equals, and we take, whoops, so we take um, this, yeah. okay, let's try this again. So we have equals, um, and then this would be this number, 65.612. So let's equal this, and then divide by that. So here we have calculated that x equals 0 .41, uh, sorry, 41.26. So if this number is correct, um, Goliath's shoe size would be a size 41, which is crazy to think about. And here within Excel, the way we did this, the way we set this up, we could change this number, um, or even actually this number here, the way the formulas work out. If he was, uh, let's say he was 10 foot tall, so 10 foot times 12 is 120 inches. So it changed all the numbers, and we see here, he'd be a size 43. All right, so Excel is very nice because once you have it set up, um, if you do the formulas and whatnot, you can just change one number, like up here, and then it gives you the formula or the, the answer back out down here. So if he was 11 foot tall, uh, be 132 inches. So the shoe size would be a size 50. All right, so um, anyway, that's how you do that for any height. So if you just have an average person, say let's say you ask your friend, you know, how tall are you? Let's say he's six foot one. So maybe you're six foot one watching this video. Six foot one, um, you would convert that to inches. So that'd be 73 inches. So the shoe size approximately would be a 13 and a half. All right, that'd be the shoe size. So again, it's not exact, but it gives you a good idea. And my actual height is about five foot nine. Um, so 69 inches, if you put that in. Um, spits out an 11 for shoe size. Uh, my shoe size in reality is a size 10, 10 and a half. So again, it's not exact, but it's pretty close to the actual number.